so what, what they set up is, in part A, they say find the equations of the chords of contact from here and here on this parabola. The equation for the chord of contact is x, x naught equals what? Do you remember? Okay, 2a, y plus y naught. Your x naught and y naught will come from these coordinates. That's that point that's off the parabola. And then a, you have to work out. So how do you do that? Okay, so you've got x squared equals 4ay up here, except instead of 4a, you see an 8. So therefore, you can infer that a in this case is equal to... Oh, two. To make 8, a is going to be equal to 2 in this case, right? So really, I can use this form, having substituted in a equals 2, and then you do it for each of these two points, okay? So can you tell me what the two equations are? What's this one? Mm-hmm. And then the second one, I got x minus 4y equals 0. x minus 4y yeah. plus 4 equals 0. Equal zero. Okay. Can we get the, um, can we also get the, like, slope-intercept form for this? Is that okay? Um, y equals 2x plus 4 on 4. Plus 4 on 4. So I'll make the x plus f on 4 plus 1. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, that's, um... Half x? Yeah, okay, great. Now, what does this mean? Um, we've got a diagram, sort of, I've started to draw up a diagram, and it's because I want to understand spatially what's happening. You saw how useful it was in the last question, so I could work out what on earth is happening, um, to be able to have a diagram there, even if it's a really awful looking diagram, it, you just need it as a, as a visual sort of crutch to lean on, okay? Now, I can work out what these things look like on here. Right? Um, a half x is going to go through the origin and then it's going to sort of gently go up. Okay? To me, it looks like that's going to be something like uh, that. Okay? Now, I'm not going to put it on because it's going to make this diagram visually too busy. But you can see that why that makes sense. Because this is the chord of contact from P. Right? What makes the chord of contact, like what's the definition of the chord of contact? How would you describe it to someone who's never heard of such an object before? It's the chord that what? Okay, yeah, 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 very good. So it's, it's the chord whose ends are from the points of intersection with the tangents. Do you agree? So can you picture the tangents sort of going like that? Um, can you picture the tangents from P? Can you picture them? Here they are, right? There are the tangents from P, so that's why you've got your chord of contact there, okay? Um, then you get this guy, which I am guessing will look something like this. Note that it is shallower than the original chord of contact. It's shallower because of why? Why is it shallower? The gradient. Yeah, the gradient is a quarter. And um, it's, it's been shifted upwards. There's my, there's my one. Oh, this is a terrible scale. You get the idea, okay? So um, th I, I've put them at the same point because the question said they're going to intersect at R, which is uh, PQ is tangent to the parabola at R. So R is somewhere on the parabola. Do you see how I actually could reason that? Even though I don't know where R is, it has to be somewhere on there. And that has to be it because I'm going to get a tangent. All right. Lastly, what am I required to prove? OK, so this is my goal. I want to prove that this is the tangent. Uh, let's see how badly this is going to turn out. Oh, I've done worse. Okay, there you go. So this is, do you have a visual now? This is where I'm going. Okay. So how do I prove it? There are, there are um, two pieces to this. First, I've got to work out where R is, right? The chords intersect at R. Well, I have the equations of the two chords. So R is not that hard to find. Let's do that, okay? Um, if the equations are y equals a half x and y equals a quarter x plus 1. Tell me what to do. I'm looking for a point of intersection. So I'm going to solve simultaneously. Yeah. Uh, you could, but that's a bit, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's breaking an egg with a sledgehammer. I really don't need to do something that involved. So I'm going to just um, substitute, I'm just going to equate the two. All right. Um, now tell me what to do. Yeah, that'll, that'll do me. So that'll give me 2x, that'll give me x, and that'll give me plus 4. Now what? Um, take x 
Yep, I'm going to subtract x from both sides, which leaves me with that, okay? Um, which, by the way, I know it's an awful diagram, but it's like, yeah, you know what? That's, that's not bad, right? Like you see, okay, so this is, this is good, this is confirmation. If I'd gotten something negative, even though my diagram is rubbish, I already know that's wrong. Oh, I did some arithmetic issue, you know, problem, okay? X equals four, that means Y is going to be two. So far, so good, which also is confirmation, okay, roughly. So um, I'm suggesting here that that's where R is, okay? Now my goal is to prove that PQ is a tangent at that point. We did something like this in the previous question about proving that something is a tangent to something else. Any suggestions from anyone in the room now? Maybe you've had enough time to catch up mentally, okay? How do I prove that PQ is tangent to this parabola at that point? How did we do it last time? We used the discriminant, which was reliant on the fact that we had the equation of the parabola, we had the equation of this tangent, uh, I'm going to not say tangent, I don't know that yet. We had the equation of this line, which I'll point out we don't currently know. And then we used the discriminant, we found it was equal to zero. In fact, in that case, we set it to be zero because we wanted it to be a tangent. That could work, um, use the discriminant. Is there anything else we could do? So R? R is this point up here. That's R, okay? Um, I'm happy to use that method. Is there anything else we could do though? I'm interested in looking at another method because I mean we just use the discriminant. Can we can we flex the muscles and try something else? Can you differentiate the parabola and then substitute? Yeah, I absolutely could. Yeah, if I find the derivative, then I can work out what the derivative is at that point. What I want is for it to match the derivative of this straight line. Okay, it sounds like for either of the options I'm going to go through. I need the equation of the tangent. I need to find the equation of PQ. So let's do that, okay? The equation of PQ. Have a look at the information you've got. What am I gonna to do to find the equation? I can find the gradient there, and then I can put one of the points in. Alternatively, because I don't already know what the gradient is, um, I could just use two-point form, because two-point form does both of those all in one hit, right? So I'm gonna do that. Y minus Y1, X minus X1, y2 minus y1. You see right there on the right hand side, that's the calculation of the gradient. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. Which one do you want to be x1, y1? Which would you prefer? I think x1 should be x2. You think it should be this one here? Yeah, okay, let's do it. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. So I'm going to, uh, mentally, um, what I often do is, once I've set that one, um, I do all of the things in relation to that. So I do all of these guys all in one hit. So I'm going to go minus 0, minus 2, minus 0, minus 2. Okay, the reason I do this, by the way, is just an exam technique. When I flop back and forth between what am I substituting, I often mix up what I'm substituting into what, and then I just make a numerical error, which is the most frustrating kind of error to make. So there's y and x. What's x2, y2? Um, one. Sorry, minus y and one. Yep, so there's the minus one and there's the one. Does that look good? Um, y, x minus two. Yeah, this is negative one on negative one. That's convenient. Y equals x minus two. Sense check, what do you think? Yeah. Looks okay. Yeah, uh, I will point out, um, I had to stop myself as I was drawing this because the scale I had originally chosen um, made it really hard to draw. So that's why if you have a look at, oh, that's one on the x axis, but this is one on the y axis. I made it a, quite different so that it would be a nicer shape. And yeah, that sure looks a whole lot like negative two, right? So thumbs up. What was I gonna do with this? Okay, yeah, fantastic. So I can already, I can immediately read off that the gradient is going to be one, okay? So now, in order to prove that this is a tangent, I need to show, number one, the gradient there at R on the parabola is also one, and I also have to prove that this goes through R, okay? That's not hard, let's do it. Um, I can prove that this goes through R without any calculus, so I'll do that first, it's very, very easy. Um, the coordinates of R are this, right? So if I, uh, Substitute, um, how will I do this? Um, four comma two into 
this, right? Uh, I'm going to do the right hand side equals um, 4 minus 2, yes? Which equals 2, which equals the left hand side as required because there's my y coordinate, okay? So therefore my conclusion from this little point is therefore R lies on P, Q. That's not enough to make it a tangent. Now I need to go for the gradient, okay? So what's dy on dx for this parabola? X squared over 8. X on 4. Yeah, so since the parabola is x squared on 8, once I differentiate, I get x on 4. Is that okay? So when x is equal to 4, which is where r is, right? dy on dx equals, surprise, surprise, 1. one. There we go. I'm done. I found that it goes through there, same gradient, that is exactly what the definition of a tangent is.